designing your network using Cisco DNA Center. In this video we will have a look at the design tab within Cisco DNA Center. You use the design tab to design your network using physical maps and logical topologies. So you can see a map in front in the screenshot in front of you. The kind of things we can do here are design the network topology using areas, buildings and floors within the site option. You can apply network settings to areas, network settings such as NTP, DNS, DHCP and so on. You can assign device type profiles. You can specify the device credentials for the network devices and use those credentials to discover those network devices. You can add wireless settings such as applying wireless SSID information and you can assign IP address pools for buildings and floors. So in the next few slides we will have a look at some of these in more detail. Moving on to areas, buildings and floors. In the design tab you can create a network hierarchy to assign network settings to different areas of an organisation. So first you would create areas, buildings and floors using a map of the world. You can specify where your areas and buildings are on the map. You would typically create an area then add your building to the area and assign floors to the building. You can also upload your own floor maps as well. And if you specify the type of radio frequency model of the floor type, DNA Center will calculate the radio frequency strength quality of wireless signals. This is also known as heat maps. Moving on to network options, you can assign network settings to the level you need to apply them to. For example, you can create an area called London and then you can apply your settings to uh, that particular area or you can apply them to uh, buildings or floors within the London area. And the different network options you can apply include DHCP, DNS, Syslog, SNMP and so on. Next to the network option we have device credentials. You can assign device credentials for your devices so you can see in the screen next to network options and using credentials you can uh, provide credentials via HTTPS, SNMP, even APIs as well as CLI so you have a number of options to be able to authenticate to the devices. Looking at the screenshot in front I was logged in in read only mode and that's why you don't see the options to add these but if you log in with read write access you would have the options to add the credentials. Next to device credentials we have the IP address pools. So you can assign IP address pools to a particular building or floor for example. It also has the ability to connect through IP address management platforms like Infoblox using APIs to keep track of all the IP addresses and what they are used for. Next is quality of service and this section is basically called the service provider profiles. So you can assign cost settings in the service provider profiles here. Moving on to wireless settings, you can build your wireless settings in here such as the SSID, wireless band and security settings for your wireless access points. You can then apply all these settings to areas, buildings and floors. In the picture I don't have any created but they would usually appear under global on the left hand side of the picture. Moving on to image repository, there is an image repository section which is used to store images which you can push to devices. And Cisco DNA Center can also display the Cisco recommended software images according to the device type. Just to bear in mind you have to have your Cisco.com credentials specified for it to be able to read this information from Cisco. And the whole point of image repository is so you can push software images to devices in your network. Network profiles. Next you can create network profiles for routing and network function virtualization, switching and wireless devices. Network profiles are standardized configuration for these devices just mentioned. We can design and create the profiles once and reuse them across multiple sites in the network which is uh, which it greatly simplifies the rollout of services and saves time. Just to bear in mind you would define network profiles for the type of devices you're deploying and network profiles then need to be assigned to sites. So 
So the whole point of network profiles is you can reuse them, which saves on uh, time, basically. And the last slide of the design tab we will have a look at is authentication templates. You can select the authentication template that will apply to all devices in the fabric domain. Authentication templates is part of the ICE integration, so you do need to be integrated with Cisco ICE. So these authentication templates are predefined configurations that are retrieved from Cisco ICE. And the authentication modes can be open, easy connect or closed. And if we have a look at the three options using closed authentication, with this any traffic prior to authentication is dropped. With Easy Connect, security is added by applying an ACL to the switch port to allow very limited access prior to authentication. And after a host has been successfully authenticated, additional network access is granted. And the last one, which is Open Authentication, a host is allowed network access without having to go through 802.1x authentication. So this was a high level overview of the design tab within Cisco DNA Center. Thanks for watching.